Imagine you're a scientist studying lithium batteries, and as a part of your research, you go to sciencedirect.com and stumble across this freaking awesome research paper about the three-dimensional porous mesh structure of Q-based metal organic framework aramid cellulose separator. Anyway, it's a long title. You get the point. Let's move on. So you start reading this paper, specifically the introduction, when you notice something rather odd. The first sentence of the paragraph is certainly here's. A possible introduction for your topic lithium metal batteries I mean come on seriously this is clearly a copy pasted answer blob from chat GPT I mean don't get me wrong I'm not saying you shouldn't use AI to fast-track your writing process nothing wrong with that but how lazy or unattentive or blind you have to be to leave that thing in there and not double check your text not only that but that is the first sentence of the introduction paragraph I guess I could understand if that slip-up happened on page 25 on a 150 page research paper but to have that on page one and not notice it man I have so many questions the folks who maintain sciencedirect.com don't you guys have some kind of a vetting process before publishing research papers on the site? Honest question, by the way. I don't have a PhD, I have never published anything on sciencedirect.com. Does that mean we can publish any random paper on that site about the effectiveness of space lasers against the interplanetary space fleet of the Zorglops species? I mean, I have some good ideas on that topic. Anyway, the reason why this frustrates me so much is the fact that these byproducts of dumb, unchecked AI hallucinations have infiltrated even the highest intelligence echelon of our society, which is the science community. And that is kind of scary. So in this video, let's unpack what is happening with AI today and where we might be heading. Let me just start by saying that I think AI is cool. Some of those tools out there are really helpful in augmenting, simplifying or amplifying some tedious tasks. Heck, I even made a video myself showing how various AI tools can speed up the process of modeling 3D characters. So I do believe in the premise of AI, but I think there's a real danger of becoming less intelligent the more we rely on it. Remember the 1970s when cars didn't have GPS technology and had to rely solely on paper maps to get around places? No? You don't remember that? Me neither. Because millennials like me were not even born back then. But you know who remembers that? Our parents and grandparents. I currently live in Toronto, Ontario. And boy oh boy, even with GPS assisted tech, it's sometimes quite difficult to navigate the highways around the city, mainly because decisions like figuring out which exit to take need to be taken in a matter of seconds, especially when traveling at 100 kilometers per hour. Luckily Google Maps or Waze or any other map software notifies you in advance what to do next. But just for a second, imagine what it would be like to be back in the 70s when you had to use a paper map. Firstly, if you were traveling alone, you would have to memorize the exits ahead of your trip and hope you don't accidentally miss one of them. If you had a second passenger, they might assist you with navigation, similarly like in NASCAR rallies or something. And now on top of that, add the stress of traveling at high speeds. How well do you think you would perform? Or better yet, if you are someone who is not using navigation assisted tech, tell us in the comments below and, and how the heck do you do it? Also, it doesn't count if you're using the same route every day. You, you probably have memorized that like a million times. Anyway, on the topic of navigation, Vox recently made a cool video about the same topic and they looked at multiple research studies to determine whether the navigational tech actually improves our spatial knowledge. And surprisingly, or maybe albeit unsurprisingly, it doesn't. It actually makes us worse at navigation. Quote, the experiments consistently show that turn-by-turn -turn navigation leaves us with poorer spatial knowledge of the area. In other words, it disengages us from the environment and that in turn makes us more lazy to actually pay attention to where we are going. And we're not even talking about AI in this example. Well, navigation guidance does use a bit of AI, I suppose. But not in the way it has been revolutionized in the recent years with ChatGPT. Now let's take what we just looked at and apply it to a more recent example. In an area where we see a huge emergence of AI assistance, and that is coding. This one hits closest to home because I work as a software engineer myself. I'm talking about GitHub Copilot. 
a pair programming AI tool that works similarly to autocomplete. You can for example write a function name and the copilot will auto suggest the function body based on the name, which kind of predicts what you want that function to do. It's smart, I gotta admit, it's cool. I love using it at work, at home, and it makes me code faster and prototype faster. To the point where, just like your morning coffee, you get addicted to it. We are now actually starting to see drawback symptoms from programmers. The YouTuber Dreams of Code made a whole video about why he's quitting Copilot, and it's simply because he and others, including some of my colleagues by the way, noticed that once they stopped using it cold turkey, they found themselves in a weird spot. It's like you would start typing something and then automatically wait for the AI assistant to suggest the next thing, just to realize that, oh wait, nobody is going to assist me anymore. What's even scarier is that Copilot is so good at producing boilerplate code for complex array operations that programmers noticed that once they stopped using it for a brief moment they ended up forgetting the proper syntax to write these functions on their own. And it's crazy to think that Copilot has been around for only a year now and people are already hooked on it like a drug. AI addiction? It's real, folks. Don't believe me? Ask the programmers at your local Copilot Anonymous support group gatherings. And so far, I have only been talking about the addiction itself. But what about the quality of outputs the AI produces? In the case of GitHub Copilot, a lot of programmers have admitted that the autocomplete suggestions are oftentimes of poor quality. And that's because this AI just aggregates code that is publicly available on the internet. And a lot of it is just bad quality code. But our current AI solutions are not sentient yet and thus cannot rationalize on whether those outputs are good or not. So what should we do about it? In order to prevent dumbing down our cognitive abilities, it might be healthy to try to challenge ourselves from time to time to give our brains some healthy stimulation. So for example, in the case of coding, we could try to turn off Copilot for a change and try to write the code ourselves from time to time. In the case of navigation, why not opt in for a paper map instead of your smartphone app? To try to improve your spatial knowledge and stimulate engagement with your surroundings. But I know, I know what you're gonna say. We have to work smart and not hard. And that is true, I completely agree with that statement. However, if you choose these AI tools to work faster and smarter, then A, be sure you know what you're doing. I mean, if the task that you hand out to AI to automate if this is a task you have never done yourself, how can you know if the AI's output is legit or of high quality? In other words, the people who will be able to leverage these tools most efficiently will be the ones who are already pretty good at that particular field and they will use AI just as a means to speed up their creation process. And B, for God's sakes, if you use these tools, please double check yourself. I mean, it's one thing if you generate a mid-journey image for your PowerPoint presentation where a human might have creepy looking hands. Odds are, no one will notice that. It's a totally different thing if you sprinkle a certainly in an actual scientific paper that people will read, dissect and judge. I mean, such a stupid small mistake arguably undermines all credibility for the authors of this paper. If they don't vet their scientific text themselves, who's to say anything in that text is even worth being taken seriously? Alright, let's ship gears a bit and let's talk about social skills. It's no secret that we are generally getting worse at socializing and people are saying there is a loneliness epidemic out there. And boy oh boy, AI is certainly not making things any better. Perhaps this is most prevalent in dating apps. There are now AI assistants for dating apps that can help people come up with openers and help you craft things to say if the conversation goes stale. Catfishing much? I mean, I find this wrong on so many reasons. First of all, yes, catfishing. If you are using an AI assistant to talk to another human being, you are not being truthful about yourself and not showing off your real personality in a conversation. This might come back to bite you when you actually meet the person face to face. And come on, let's be clear. If you're someone who's paying for these AI assistants, you do know that you are basically using ChatGPT under an abstraction layer, right? You might as well just ask ChatGPT what to reply and avoid paying all of those service fees for those AI assistants. Maybe one of the worst products I've seen out there in the dating space 
is this. Some startups in particular are looking at ways that you could actually train an AI chatbot on your personality and then send the chatbot out to interact with other chatbots on your behalf and then come back with some recommendations. People have become so socially awkward to the point where they would rather send a robot to talk to another robot on their behalf instead of actually engaging in a real human conversation. This is not going to help overcome social anxiety, that's for sure. If anything, it just might make it worse. Maybe a bit more subtle, but yet important indication that the society is dumbing down because of AI is the fact that we are now introducing new bull jobs like prompt engineers. Jon Stewart described this perfectly in his Daily Show segment. Who would have thought that there would be a prompt engineer, right? Right. <laughs> prompt engineer. I think you mean types question guy. <laughs> and by the way, if there's any job that can be easily replaced by AI, it's types question guy. <laughs> A few years ago, the term engineer used to actually mean something. In a regular sense, an engineer was someone who had obtained at least a Bachelor of Science degree, which meant that this person had at least taken some math or natural science courses during their program. Me, myself, I have a master's degree in computer science. I work as a software engineer as my day job. But here in Canada, where I currently live, under the provincial law, even I can't legally call myself an engineer. Because, quote, in Canada, only those licensed by a provincial or territorial engineering regulator may practice engineering and refer to themselves as an engineer. The exclusive use of this title by licensed engineers helps assure the public that only qualified individuals are practicing in the profession. Honestly, this law just might be taking things a bit too far, but you get the idea. Engineer means a person who understands math or natural sciences, or at least how software systems work, or anything else of that nature. But prompt engineer is nothing more than a... Types question guy. <laughs> Now look, I'm not saying we should not use these AI assistants and AI tools, quite the contrary. I think in the future we will see more and more great examples of human creativity being amplified by this new tech. But we should not let it overtake our abilities to perform simple tasks, ones that we used to do perfectly fine before AI came to the space. If we rely on it too heavily, it could end up becoming a support system we can no longer function without. And I don't think we want that. But in any case, one thing is for certain, AI is here to stay, and we just have to learn to somehow coexist in this new reality we live in. And the future is going to be very interesting, that's for sure. But those are just my thoughts on the topic. How do you feel about AI? Have you experienced any weird attachment to these tools or an addiction maybe? Do you think you could perform those same tasks just as easily if OpenAI shut down their servers tomorrow? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And most importantly, if you like this video, hit that juicy like button. And if you enjoy these types of social commentary videos and you want to see more of them, then consider subscribing to my channel. With that said, thank you folks for watching and I will see you next time.